Unearthly is about a 16-year-old girl who has found out, not in the book, but finds out a few years before the book starts that she's part angel. And I really wanted to get what that would be like. Like if your mother just suddenly said to you, by the way, you're part angel, like what kind of ridiculous reaction you would have to that. And her mother tells her that all of these sort of part angel people have a purpose on this earth. It's a specific thing that they're supposed to do. And that when she's old enough, she'll start to have visions of this purpose. And so the book starts with her having a vision of a forest fire and a boy standing watching it. And she doesn't quite know what it's about or what she's supposed to do. And she starts to figure out the pieces and she ends up moving from California to Jackson Hole, Wyoming to search for this vision happening. And so it sort of follows her along as she tries to figure it out. You know, for me, what really was fun about it was I felt like her, I mean, she has this, you know, this sort of supernatural thing that's going on. And I liked playing with that. But what I really um, related to with her was just that sort of question of why am I here that I think so many people at any given point in their lives, they have to address that. And, and for her, it was very literal. But I felt like there was this large sort of metaphorical thing working for her throughout the whole book. And, and, uh, and in Hallowed as well, like, I think Hallowed's question is more, okay, I think I've screwed up what I'm supposed to do. What do I do now? Kind of kind of vibe to it. And I think that's really, for me, I, that really spoke to me, you know, in different places in my own life. So um, I think that's part of, part of why people like Unearthly and, and sort of why they respond to it is because there's that sort of universal question underneath of it. I always liked writing. I never really considered it as what my profession would be. I was pre-law, actually, when I was here at the College of Idaho. And I had this little revelation in the middle of my junior year that I didn't really want to be a lawyer. <laughs> and I liked writing, and I wanted to learn more about it, so I kind of leapt into a MFA program. And that was, uh, it was a wild leap. I didn't know what I was doing. I was instantly sort of the clueless one in my MFA. But I learned pretty quickly and really grew to love writing literary fiction and I wrote literary fiction for the next five or six years and then I did, uh, I wrote a short story about Idaho. I'd been avoiding writing about Idaho in my MFA for the first couple of years. I didn't want to be seen as the local hick, you know, I was the only student from Idaho that was there and um, and so finally my third year I said okay I'll write one story about Idaho and we'll see what people think. And people really loved that story, and my professors suggested I send it out. And it immediately got published in this great literary journal. And then from that, I had a few agents call me and ask me what I was working on, and that's how I kind of hooked up with my agent. And then life got busy in the next few years. I didn't write anything for about five years after I got my agent. But um, when I had the idea for Unearthly, then uh, I kind of slipped it to my agent like, OK, I've been working on something else for five years, but here's this thing that's totally different than what you were expecting. And she, I was very nervous because she's, it's, you know, she wasn't really into young adult fiction at that time. Um, but she loved it, and we just sort of rolled from there. I think it was about a week after she got back to me about you know, whether or not she wanted to handle Unearthly that she had lunch with an executive editor at HarperCollins and the editor said, we're really looking for something that's angel related. We think angels are going to be the next hot trend. And my agent was like, ooh, ooh, you know, like my client just wrote this awesome angel related thing. And I think it was probably two or three weeks from that point that I had a book contract. So it went very, very smoothly in this weird sort of dreamlike way from that point. So it was really kind of this, it's still very surreal thing for me, the publishing part of it. And, and the writing was really fun too. When I wrote Unearthly, I kind of wrote during my toddler's naps and I just wrote it for myself. I really wanted to uh, understand the story and just figure out what happened. And I worried about publishing later, you know, but but that was really fun. It was just a really fun thing to do. And now the second book was was a lot harder because I was a lot busier. I didn't have, my son didn't nap anymore and, and I had a lot more pressure and marketing things from the first book and all of that and it was a lot harder. I do think the second book's actually a better book in a lot of ways. It's a little bit more sophisticated in the telling but it was not as fun to write. So I'm kind of hoping to get to that space where it's just sort of easy and fun again, you know, so that's great. Yeah, they sold the film rights um, before the book came out and I think one of the reasons why it sold so easily was I told my agent to forward the pictures of Jackson Hole with the manuscript. And I think that it really helped them to visualize what that was about. And then, um, so they sold the film rights and, and that was quite the sort of weird, surreal experience. And then the producer, 
um, really saw it in television, so she started shopping it in television. And then they got this amazing writer, um, Kevin Murphy is the writer um, for the script, and he's like the creator of Hellcats, and he's done a lot of Desperate Housewives and things like that. Um, in the next couple of weeks, we should hear, you know, whether they're going to start shooting, because when they shoot, they shoot in like March and April. You know, they cast in February and shoot in March and April, and kind of decide where it lands in May. So. It'll be, its fate will be decided soon. Um, my deal with HarperCollins is a three book deal, so I have to write one more for them and I'm behind schedule. Um, mostly because of me being on tour and like uh, all of that. So I have one more to write for them and then um, I have a couple of back burner projects that I haven't allowed myself to work on um, because I'm working on writing the, th the third book. And so I'll be very excited to be done with the third book and be able to sort of work on that at my own pace. But I haven't actually sold those projects yet. But um, but I think I'm having an inkling that you know they'll they'll probably sell fine. So um, yeah, it's it's great to have a lot of ideas. I had very few ideas in the period after I graduated with my PhD to when I had the. It was about five years that. I didn't have a lot of ideas. I wasn't really stimulated as a writer. Now I just have too many ideas, and that's a really great place to be. Have too many ideas for books and too many things sort of on the back burner. So I'm excited to be able to just work and have fun writing. So um, I really wanted to go here. Um, when I, I had like a full ride scholarship to Boise State that I was sure my dad was going to make me go to. And it's funny, I ended up at Boise State for grad school and it was fine, it was great, but I wanted to go here. I really wanted to go here and I loved it here. I loved all four years. Um, I just loved the smallness of it and the sense of community and the closeness of the students and the professors and it was just a really great four years for me and I feel like um, I, you know, I had my degree in English and I did a lot of like pre-law classes and like you know, like um, constitutional law and, um, you know, political science and things and debate and stuff like that. But um, I felt like my education was so rounded. And I think that's the point, right? You know, I loved a lot of professors. Um, I think I minored in history because I loved classes with Dr. Berger and Dr. Mon and, and um, I, I, I was a theater minor and I really loved being in that world. I think probably out of all the things that I miss, you know, from my life, the theater part is the part that I sort of miss with the sort of achy part of my soul, <laughs> like, oh, theater. Um, and, uh, and and the English professors were really influential to me, too. I remember just how much I took in from the kind of detailed way that we read each text and, and how, you know, the papers that I wrote. And, and I think that was one of the great things was just sort of the smallness allowed me to have a really good dialogue with my professors about the different pieces of work that we read and and uh, that that really helped me to sort of understand what you know the texts that we read in the books and and the craft of writing itself you know even outside of like creative writing classes so so that helped me a lot and and uh, yeah I had lots of favorite professors I didn't have I didn't have any professors that I can think of that I didn't really like you know so that's, I think that's probably rare. I think one of the best things I got out of um, my education here was the idea to sort, the, the ability to hold two kind of maybe not perfectly working together ideas in my head, like, you know, and be able to sort of debate and talk about them without having to sort of move one direction or another. And I like that about that. I think I learned a lot of that ability from different classes I had here. And, and I had a lot of, um, yeah, just just good experiences in learning, you know, like just I liked to study and learn and, and I think that this place fostered that for me.